When we say development of the self, what does that mean? <clears throat> See, uh, what we have been now look into at least is this activity of imagination which is taking place at the level of self. You know? And if you look at this activity of the self, the activity of imagination, it can be further refined in terms of the activity of desire, thought and expectation. <clears throat> now, if you look at ourselves, most of us are <clears throat> living with this, you know, lowest activity of expectation that is selecting and testing. Right? Now, slowly we become aware of this higher activity of thought of analyzing, comparing, and then the activity of desire, the activity of feeling, what we are calling as imaging. So slowly we are growing towards the higher activities of the self. <clears throat> so this is the process of development of the self. Now what we are saying is that one crucial uh, kind of activity that, you know, is there is this activity of desire, you know, that imaging, the feeling, right? And most of us, us, most of us have touched that, you know, level, right? So we can see that we have some imagination going on. At the base of that imagination, we have some desire, some feeling. Then this feeling, this desire is being expanded in terms of thought mm -hmm. and further expanded in terms of expectation. Mm -hmm. And that is how it is expressed externally in terms of behavior and work. So <clears throat> basically when it comes to development of the self, right, as we move from lower activity to the higher activity of the self, starting from selecting and testing to imaging, starting from expectation to desire, so this process of development has been taking place in us even without we being aware of it. Right? So in a very natural manner, this development is taking place. <clears throat> now what we are saying is that there is a crucial shift you know, <clears throat> in this process of development. When we can ask this question to ourselves that this desire is this feeling is naturally acceptable to us. Is it in accordance with our natural acceptance? So this is a question that we have to ask to ourselves. And this has to be done with our self-awareness. So this is the real, you know, kind of shift. That till now, when we were working with the activity of expectation and thought and desire, this was, this development was taking place, you know, naturally. But now this has to be done with our awareness, with our consciousness, <coughs> being aware of yourself. And then asking this question, that given this feeling in me, given this desire in me, right, is it naturally acceptable to me? Is it in accordance with my natural acceptance? which ultimately would mean, is it in accordance with the feeling of relationship, harmony and coexistence, which is naturally acceptable. If we are asking this question, then we are basically shifting from this lower set of activities of desire, thought and expectation to higher set of activity, what we were calling as realization, understanding, like that. So this is the real shift in the process of development, right? So ultimately what we are saying is that if we become aware of this natural acceptance, and if we can make sure that all our imagination, all our desire, thought and expectations are in line with this natural acceptance, then we can be in a state of harmony within, or a state of happiness within in continuity. So if I can ensure this at this moment, 
that my desire is in line with my natural acceptance, I can ensure to be in harmony and happiness at this moment. And if I can do this for every moment, I can be in a state of continuous happiness every moment. And that is a developed self, self which has developed to the point where it had to. So this is the ultimate point of development. So we will see as we go along, you know, in this course very briefly, but in higher courses, that when these higher activities of the self, which we have identified as activity of realization, understanding and contemplation, which basically relates to this, you know, the capacity to see this coexistence, harmony and relationship. So if we are awakened to this higher set of activities, and this can be done through accessing our natural acceptance. So when we are awakened to these higher activities of the self, and this, this is what is guiding the lower activities, this desire, thought and expectation, then we are in a state of harmony and happiness. So in simpler words, what we have been we have been able to explore till now, if our imagination, our feeling are in line with our natural acceptance, we are in a state of harmony and happiness. And if we can ensure this every moment, we can be in a state of harmony and happiness every moment. So we can have this continuity of happiness. This is a state of development of the self. This is where we all want to reach. So if you look at this slide, you know, it is mentioning about this series of you know, kind of process of development. So starting from selecting and testing, we are aware of this whole activity of imagination, which includes desire, thought and expectation. Then we become aware of you know, whether this desire is right or not the right desire. And then ultimately we are aware of this understanding and realization and all these things. So if you look at the top, we are aware of this activity of realization, understanding and contemplation that violet colors block, what we call as block B1. This is the set of higher activities, which is guiding the lower activity of imagination, activity of desire, thought and expectation. So if we have reached to that peak, we are a developed self, a pure self, a realized self. If we are at a place lower than that, then we are in the process. The major transformation, if you can see this arrow, is taking place when we have started asking this question to ourselves, whether this desire at this moment, this feeling of this moment, is in line with my natural acceptance or not in line with my natural acceptance. In other words, is it in line with the feeling of relationship, harmony and coexistence, or is it otherwise? Yeah, you were uh, saying that this process is anyway happening, that it is naturally happening. So a question comes to mind, then do we really need to make the effort? Yeah, till you become aware of your desire, you know, feeling, or you become conscious of this activity of desire, this activity of feeling, you don't need to make effort, you know, even otherwise it will happen. So for example, if you look at the animals, right, they are largely connected with this selecting and testing. Mm. So they will find out what is suitable for their body, eat that, whatever is not suitable, will not, they will not eat. So this is selecting and testing from things outside. And that is how they are nurturing their body. Right. When you look at human being, you know, this thought has become more important for human being than selecting and testing. Mm. So you keep thinking, you keep asking questions, you are trying to understand things, right? So if you look at the human child, it is not satisfied with just you know, filling his stomach like an animal child would do. The human child will keep asking questions, you know, what is this, how is this, you know, how did it happen? Now this thought has become significant. Mm. Then you can see people who 
wants to become something, no? They want to be something. Right. So that desire is there. This feeling is there. And then we have people in the history who you know, wanted to have this feeling of love, feeling of compassion for everyone. So this feeling has also become important. So this is a natural growth, natural process of growth taking place, you know, and it is quite visible if you look at animals and look at human beings. Mm. Unfortunately, if you look at the people today or the whole civilization today, the whole civilization today is busy trying to fulfill this, you know, activity of selecting and testing, which is not very fortunate. So I keep taking this example that if you look at an air conditioner, right, you have invested so much of your thought and analysis and all that, you know, research and development and so much production, distribution. But with an air conditioner, what are we doing? We are only making the temperature of the environment conducive right, to our test. Mm. So we want a uh, we don't want a hot, you know, weather. So we don't want a touch of that weather on my skin, you know, which is 40 degree, 42 degree, like that. So I want to keep it cool. But ultimately it is selecting and testing, nothing higher than that. So today all our thought, all our desire, all our imagination is put to please this you know, sensation from the body. Most of it, I would say. So this is how the whole civilization is busy, you know, trying to make conducive, you know, environment for you, a conducive physical environment for you, so that you get right kind of test from the body. So this selecting and testing is what is what it is focusing on. But that's a part. <clears throat> I mean, we should also verify where we are. You know, we are focused on selecting and testing, or at analyzing and comparing, or at the level of imaging or even at the level of feeling, which is in line with the feeling of relationship, harmony, and coexistence. So this is the <laughs> process of development, I would say. But what you are asking, you know, that is it, if it is natural, why, you know, kind of, kind of worry for it? Mm. Let it happen. So what I was saying that it will not just keep happening in a natural way. You are asking this question to yourself is also a natural process. Mm -hmm. So this self, when it develops up to this point of desire, that feeling, then it has it is natural for this self to ask. Mm -hmm. So we are not asking something unnatural to, you know, for us to do. But what we are saying that till this point of feeling, things will happen <clears throat> even the self, even if the self is not making any conscious effort. But once it reaches to that state of, you know, this feeling, state of feeling, then it is natural for it to ask this question. Mm -hmm. So it will ask this question. The question is that, do we facilitate it through process of education? Or we let it happen in a very you know, natural manner or unorganized manner? What we are saying is that here comes the role of education. Till then, there is role of training. So the role of education is essentially this, to help every self, every child, to ask this question to himself. And if he starts asking this question, the process of development will be accelerated. That is the crucial thing. The process of development will be accelerated if you are helping the child to ask this question to self, and get the answer from within. The answers are there. It is ready made. Your natural acceptance is there, sitting in you. That inner voice, that inner conscience is already there. We only have to start asking the question. Mm -hmm. So if you do that, and if you get the answer from within, then it will be very reinforcing. You know, this process of development will be accelerated. And this is what we are trying to do. Now this is so helpful for us. You know, so uh, kind of um, 
revealing because we are not importing something from outside we are looking within and getting the answer so it is part and parcel of our being so what we are doing through ehv is just putting that reminder you know, drawing your attention towards this and it is natural for you to ask this question even otherwise but we are facilitating the process through this process of education where your process can get accelerated mm. and this is the major role of education i would say because once your attention is drawn towards it then things start taking place you know so many senior people who have been sharing their experience that in few months you know, it has made a significant impact you know significant change in their life right not that they have completely changed and reached to the top of the, mm. this growth or this development but yes <clears throat> it is making some difference because they can see that there is some referential point in them and then that they can use as a basic reference and start building up from there so that would not have happened naturally in the I mean, naturally in the sense that without our self part, our participation of the self mm -hmm. so we are saying that this is also a natural process but here the participation of this self is playing a significant role and the role of education is you know important in this sense that it should be able to make us see that yes in the process of natural development our participation of this self is also a very natural process and that natural process can be initiated by asking this question about the feeling about the desire <clears throat> as to whether it is naturally acceptable to me or not naturally acceptable to me. Mm. yes yeah i can see that you know um uh, we keep running after physical facility and then at some point we realize that we are still not fulfilled and then we ask more and more of these questions so i can see that yes if as a child these questions are put forward and uh, the child is made to explore perhaps we can get to this point much earlier and without going through all this experience yes <clears throat> yes true true and that is why this should be brought in education mainstream education you know as early in age also as possible <clears throat> yeah i was saying that we should provide that environment to the child from 0 to 5 years of age at home you know <clears throat> so that you know he starts asking this question right there he is in fact even if you look at the child now this he is paying more importance to feeling than the physical things <clears throat> if you study the child you will see most of the child children you know will pay more attention to the feelings than the physical things mm -hmm. so that level of you know uh, development is already there so we can you know start drawing this their attention towards it in terms of our behavior in terms of our work like if we behave with relationship harmony and coexistence if we work with relationship harmony and coexistence the child will start picking it up so when uh, they are very young very small they we provide them the right kind of environment when they grow and they start asking question we should be able to respond to them in terms of this and when they are you know you know more asking to explore things themselves we should facilitate them mm -hmm. that is how the whole education content and the process has to be developed yes but the problem comes that uh, you know ever since we are we are doing this exercises on self awareness the problem seemed to have increased like uh, it looks like i was quite happy before but now uh, so much of 
confusion is there inside after asking some questions that it's difficult to even sleep properly so how to go about that <laughs> yes yeah this is experience of many people <clears throat> and what i would say is that you know not that you have become more of worried and you know, more confused but you have become aware of it mm so when you, we start becoming aware of ourselves we are able to see that there are you know contradictions within and therefore unhappiness within this was there even before but we were not aware of it so it appears that our unhappiness you know has increased when we become aware of it right in fact if you look at you know people you will see and look at yourself also you will see that you know you are in a state of confusion within unhappiness within contradiction within and then you start looking for divergence that we discussed you know mm. so you try to escape from unhappiness and that also you are doing unconsciously mm. so you take to eating something which you find tasty or they start listening to some music right and do such kind of things right or take to some alcohol or take to drugs so all that you have been doing without being aware of the whole thing now when you start become aware of it you are able to face your you know contradictions your confusion your unhappiness but this is something we have to go through you know? we have to face we have to be aware of it we have to ask question whether it is worth continuing with this or not worth continuing with this you know is there a way out right so all these questions is being asked and you are aware of your unhappiness which is good you were unhappy you are full of contradictions and confusion and you know you were unconscious about it and then you wanted some diversion so you are looking for some diversion in fact most of this problem of obesity is because of this you know that you are unhappy within so you want to indulge in something you know tasty mm. so you are indulging and at after a point you find that it is not necessary for the body but self requires this diversion so you keep eating You know, and you take to overeating, and then you keep accumulating a lot of fat and all that. So all this was happening before, but you were not aware. Now you have become aware, right? Mm-hmm. When you become aware, it appears that yes, this unhappiness, this confusion, this contradiction has increased. But it has not increased. Only thing that you have become aware. and you have to go through this process because you know this be not being aware of things only makes us you know continue with this when we become aware we'll try to sort it out we'll try to sort it out i think that's the thing earlier i was probably unhappy from time to time and i accepted that as a part of life that it has to be this way and i was just going about it uh, but now that i can see uh, that this is uh, something that i have to work with now that seems like a lot of work to do yes either you accept it or you di- try to divert mm i mean in your case you accepted it you know as a part of life but many people look for diversion you know what is written here overeating oversleeping taking good ka alcohol drugs so that means unhappiness was there okay this contradiction this confusion was there and you were fed up of it so you were trying to escape from it yes so initially them it may look that confusion has increased contradiction has can unhappiness has increased Mm-hmm. but then when you become aware of it you try to find a solution and we are essentially talking about the solution so when we work with the solution we find that yes we are getting resolved within slowly 
Of course, it takes time because a whole lot of this preconditioning we have accumulated. A whole lot of this sanskar is there. So we have to purify them. We have to work on them step by step. So it takes time, but it is worth. I can make effort and, you know, I'm still willing to work for making effort for this but then what about other like i can try to be in harmony myself but there are so many other things around that keep disrupting that harmony so it seems like a very difficult situation how to deal with that <clears throat> yes i mean it is difficult so and see this, all our effort, if you see what we are doing through EHP, for example, is an effort to resolve this problem. That not only that we want to be better, improve on ourselves, but we want that everyone should improve because we are in interaction with everyone. And we feel that feeling, you know, we have that feeling of relationship for them. Right, that feeling of harmony with them. So yes. what we have to do along with working on ourselves, right, we have to work with the people around. So what I am saying is that we have to understand this harmony in society and harmony in family and nature, and then define a way of life, a system in the society which ensures the fulfillment of all these harmonies then we will be free of these contradictions. So, we said all our you know, levels of being, starting from the self, to in, you know, starting from individual to family to society and nature and existence. So, we need to understand the harmony at all these levels and we have to you know, work for ensuring harmony at all these levels. Then everything will be conducive. Till then, yes, we have to start working with our own self, right? We start working with our own self. So we are comfortable within. With that comfortability within, now we can work for the comfortability you know, with the world around, with the family members, with our colleagues, you know, with our Very true. society. So all that we have to do step by step. Yes. But the important point is that we have to begin with ourselves. And what is being said and what is now you can see is that it is possible. It is possible to start with our own self, even if the environment is not very favorable. So we have to start with ourselves, then we have to start you know, unfolding, expanding. So work with, you know, with members in the family, work with the people in our workplace, in the society and ultimately work for the society as a whole. And when we are working for the society as a whole, of course, nature you know, is there. So we'll work with the nature as well. Yeah. With regard to selecting and tasting, means expectation. So this is an expression of our desire. We express our all the desire. Ultimately, that is selecting and you know uh, tasting. So I wanted to know, uh, is it the compassion? Because the compassion is also expression of love. The compassion is also expression of values. So the selecting and tasting is related to compassion. That is first reinforcement I require. And the second clarification uh, information I need is when, you, when we are going to uh, learn or explore on compassion in this, in the in this UHV. Yeah. This is what I want to so, know. <clears throat> yeah. So this, um, what we are saying is that when we have a desire, a feeling, it is expressed in terms of thought and expectation at the level of self. Now what, if you look at this love and compassion, love is a feeling, <laughs> right, in this self. And the expression of this feeling in terms of thought and expectation of the self is what is called this compassion. So with feeling of love, 
we will have the thought and expectation of compassion based on this feeling of love is what is being called as compassion you know, how do i go about fulfilling my you know, relationship with other human being with every human being with every unit in nature that is compassion compassion is then expression of this feeling of love and expression is at the level of self in terms of thought and expectation sometime it comes out as behavior also but even if it does not come out as behavior it is there it is there in the self and that is important so this feeling of love can be there continuously in us this feeling of love expressed in terms of you know thought of compassion will also can also be there continuously in us but my expression in terms of behavior will be as and when required so i will not go around and try to express it you know with everybody with every unit, unit in nature but i have that feeling have that thought in me that expectation in me and whenever there is an opportunity outside whenever there is a need outside i will express it in terms of my behavior and we will briefly talk about this feeling of love when we are talking about this harmony in family where we are talking about relationship and about the feelings in relationship so the ultimate feeling in relationship is the feeling of love where we feel related to every human being every unit in existence in nature sir linking link the selecting and tasting with compassion sir please repeat sir uh, compassion is understood that you know it's expression of love more in the self now mm-hmm. the selecting and tasting is also expression of love yes so uh, how is it okay if i relate selecting and com- you know, tasting with compassion or am i wrong yeah selecting and tasting in the self is, is compa- part of compassion yes but its expression outside in terms of behavior is, is still another thing you know so that we have to differentiate okay It's selecting and testing in the self will go on continuously but expressing it outside in through body will take place from time to time as and when necessary yeah and this is important to understand you know because this man sitting and you know reflecting right we think that he is not doing anything outside right yes he is not doing anything outside but he is doing so much inside correct he is trying to work out the details of how to you know be with this feeling of love so he is creating solutions within so okay. when you go on about some problem he will be able to respond because he has done so much in his imagination you know so that compassion which is there in his imagination on going on in his imagination is there is creating so many solutions so when you go to such people they will be able to give you some you know meaningful answers because they are already you know working on those answers so outside they may not seem to be doing something you know immediately but yes they are doing so much inside and as and when necessary they can do it even outside and is this expectation with myself or also with others the expectation means what i have to do in my relationship right okay so this is the expectation now fortunately or unfortunately we keep expecting it from others without trying to work on making it you know possible from our side 
So this has created a lot of problem. That I have expectation from you and you have expectation from me. So I expect you to behave with me with a feeling of respect. You are expecting that you know me to behave with feeling of respect. Right? Both of us are expecting this. You know, other to behave with the feeling of respect. But we are not working for ourselves. We are not working to ensure this feeling of respect in ourselves and express it with others. So, if you see, the expectation would be from both end. You know, I would like to have this feeling of respect in myself and have this feeling of respect in the other. But I'm not working in the first for the first one, and I'm expecting expecting it from the other. Then I'm in trouble. And this other person is also in trouble. So both of us are in trouble. But ultimately, I would certainly like that I have this feeling of respect. The other person also has a feeling of respect. I express my feeling of respect. He also expresses his feeling of respect. But where do I start? I start with myself. I ensure this feeling of respect in me <laughs> for myself and for others and everyone. Then I express this feeling with the other. When I do this, I understand that if the other person has the right understanding, he will have this develop this right feeling and he will express this right feeling. Okay. Otherwise, he will not be able to do it. So on the one hand, I have this feeling of respect and I am willing to share with others. On the other hand, I can see that he can do it, he can have this feeling and express only when he has the right understanding. So I'm now not you know, seeking that feeling of respect from others in the sense that I can see that he will have this feeling of respect only when he has this right understanding. And in that case, anyway, he will express the feeling of respect. So on the one hand, I have the feeling of respect which I can share with others. On the other hand, I'm no more dependent on the other, you know, for his feeling. Because I know that he will have it only when he has the right understanding. So it might take time for him. But I am willing to share my feeling of respect with the other. And if the other is also starts working on himself, then the problem is solved. Then both of us can have this feeling of respect. And if we have the feeling of respect, we are willing to share it with others. We do want to share it with others. Right? So now there is no problem in the relationship. We can have these feelings, we can share these feelings, we can ensure happiness within ourselves, we can happiness of, you know, ensure happiness for others. So we can live with mutual happiness. Okay, sir. Thank you. Yes. But to begin with, I have to work with myself. 